Jean Virginia Jenny Sampar went missing on Thursday, October 14, 1971, outside Gitskukla, British Columbia, Canada. She was last seen by her cousin near the railroad overpass on Highway 16 outside of Gitskukla. Sampar's cousin, who was walking with her, went to get a jacket or a bike from his home and when he came back Sampar was gone. Despite the police and local community searching nearby areas for her for the eight days following her disappearance, their efforts proved unsuccessful. She has not been seen since. Despite multiple theories surrounding what could have led to her disappearance, there has been no conclusive evidence to back any of them up. Background Sampar was born on September 10, 1953, into a First Nations family of Gitsan descent. Her birth location and parents' names are not public knowledge. She is the second youngest of six children. Her siblings are Anne, Winnie, Sandra, Virginia and Rod, with Sandra being the youngest. Sampar attended high school in Hazleton, British Columbia. When she was older, she worked in a cannery and as a caretaker for her siblings. She lived with her parents in Gitskukla. Ra described their parents as very strict and watchful. The children were not allowed to play after nine and their parents made them work hard. Sampar was planning to move to Terrace with Rod later in the month that she went missing. She worked at the Royal Packing Company Salmon Canning Plant in Claxton and was described as a healthy, normal 18-year-old woman. Personality Growing up, Sampar was described as a shy, quiet child who sang teasing songs to her siblings. She loved to play nurse with her siblings and would take turns with Winnie being the nurse. Sampar would often let someone know of her plans, and it was out of character for her to leave unannounced. She volunteered as a caretaker for her siblings, protecting them when their father drank too much. Ra described her as quiet and strong very strong, and said that she had a promising future as a fair-headed girl. Rod explained in an inquiry that Sampar was careful and did not partake in any high-risk activities. Relationship status Sampar's boyfriend, who also had worked at the canning plant, had gone missing shortly before she disappeared. His remains were found after Sampar disappeared. He had drowned in the Skeena River. Identifying characteristics Sampar has dark hair and eyes. Personal items at time of disappearance There is no public record regarding the items which Sampar had taken with her when she went missing. Though it was a cold night, she had left her jacket at home. Disappearance The night of the disappearance, October 14, 1971, Rod's wife, Violet, testified that she saw Sampar at Sampar's mother's house. Violet said that Sampar's mother came home and went into the kitchen. Soon after Sampar came out of the kitchen and looked like she was crying. Sampar was avoiding eye contact with Violet. Asking what was wrong, Violet said that Sampar went straight to the door, opened the door and walked out. Violet tried to call Sampar and ask where she was going. Violet tried to get Sampar, but her mother-in-law stopped her, saying that she'll come back. Violet said that this was between 10 p.m. and 11.00 p.m. Alvin High Rams, High Zims. Sampar's cousin was reported to be the last person to have seen her. He was walking with Sampar alongside Highway 16 when he left to either get a jacket or a bike and then rejoin her. Alvin believed at the time that Sampar was going to a store that was close to the railroad overpass outside of town. Alvin's house was close to where he parted from Sampar, just south of the highway. Violet reported that Alvin came back to the highway and heard a vehicle door close, but Sampar was nowhere to be seen. After Sampar did not return home that night, her mother reported her missing the next morning to the Gitskukla Indian Band office in Gitskukla. Someone at the band office mistakenly said that they had to wait a certain amount of time before reporting the disappearance to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police RCMP. Even after waiting and rather than reporting it, the band office sent someone to South Hazelton and Kitimat to see if she was with her sisters Winnie or Anna, but she was not. After talking with Sam Bear's friends, some of them in Kispioke, 
they went to the RCMP. Investigation on October 16, the RCMP took a missing persons report from Sam Bear's mother. The RCMP checked with Anna, Winnie, and Sam Bear's friends and other family and confirmed that no one had made contact with her since she was last seen by Alvin. The police never found any leads or further information that was ever released to the public. The RCMP reported to Rod that the case was closed in 1985, citing a report from the Yutsukul Band chief counselor in 1971 that Sampar had drowned, an assertion for which there was no conclusive evidence. The case was subsequently reopened after the family complained. The RCMP also took DNA from Sampar's siblings around 2006. The family believed that this was in response to the Robert Picton investigation. Nothing was reported publicly as to whether this produced any further leads in the case. At one point Rod claimed that he saw part of the RCMP file on Sampar, which indicated that a man named Kenny Russell saw her footprints next to the river, leading to the presumption that she went in. Rod asked for a copy of the complete file but was refused. Search effort for eight days after she went missing, police and community members searched for her. The village initiated the search and the RCMP joined in later with a police dog from Peace River and officers from other towns. A base of operations for the search was set up, where searchers were coordinated and fed by volunteers. The search stopped when an early snow fell. Sam Bear's parents started up the search again soon after the snow. The police followed suit. The bushes and bank along the Skeena River and its tributaries in the area were searched from Kitsilos Canyon, downstream of Gitskukla, to points upstream of GITSEGUKLA. The family also did some spot searches around major cities such as Vancouver and Toronto, usually after receiving a tip. Nothing worth noting publicly was found in these searches. Gitskukla Geography Gitskukla is a village located in the Skeena Valley between Hazelton and Kitwonga, British Columbia. It is in the center of the Hazelton Mountain Group. The area is largely mountainous with the Skeena River and some of its tributaries running through it. Topsoil is sparse, with a sandstone shale bedrock exposed or just below the soil surface in much of the area above the Skeena, and sand. Gravel and clay with exposed bedrock near and under the Skeena River. Animals in the area include salmon, trout, eagle, ravens, robins, black bears, elk, lynx, owl, coyotes, wolves and deer. There are numerous mines in the area. Some were active in the 1970s, but many of them were abandoned shaft mines. Gitskukla is located on an Indian reserve in traditional Gitsan territory. The band operates out of Gitskukla. Awareness effort Both Winnie and Rod Sampar have talked to the media about their sister's disappearance and they spoke along with Victoria at an inquiry on missing and murdered indigenous women and girls in September 2017. There were a few newspaper articles referencing her disappearance and the search effort in 1971. Other than this, there is no public record of missing posters or any other media that went out surrounding the disappearance. Theories It is not publicly known what happened to Sampar. Her band at one time had tried to list her as being deceased, however, after pushback from Sampar's mother, they changed her status back to missing. Accident Suicide or animal attack Rod said that a man named Kenny Russell had found some footprints near Gitskukla River, with the implication being that Sampar fell into the river. This theory has been dispelled by Sampar's family because there was no evidence that the footprints were Sampar's or that they have ever been confirmed as footprints, considering the shoreline where they were found is mainly stone. In addition to this, Sampar's parents raised her to know not to commit suicide instilling this attitude in both her and her siblings frequently. Although Sampar may have been under stress from the disappearance of her boyfriend and the altercation with her mother, there is no public knowledge of a suicide note or any indication that she was suicidal. There is no publicly known evidence that Sampar was attacked by an animal. Runaway There is no public record of Sampar ever running away before her disappearance. In fact, her sister Winnie stated publicly that Sampar did not partake in high-risk activities. 
Although she may have been under stress, it was not in her nature to break contact with her relations so abruptly and for such a prolonged period of time, and Sampar always told someone her plans. In addition to this, though it was a cold night, Sampar left her jacket at home, which indicated that she was not planning on being outside for long. Foul play neither Sampar's family nor the RCMP have ruled out foul play in her disappearance. They have not proven foul play either. There is no strong evidence that Sampar had a misadventure or committed suicide, and Sampar leaving behind her jacket on that cold night was evidence against the theory that Ginny ran away. Also, Alvin's report that he heard a vehicle door close just before he was expecting to meet up with Sampar supports the theory that she was taken by a vehicle. Friends or associates There is no public record that either Sampar's friends or associates had any reason to cause her disappearance. Stranger There is no public record that Sampar met a stranger who caused her disappearance. Highway of Tears Sampar went missing one year. Almost to the day, after Helen Claire Frost, who disappeared on Tuesday, October 13, 1970, and three years before Monica Ignis, who disappeared on Friday, December 13, 1974. Frost disappeared from Prince George, British Columbia, and Ignaz from Thornhill, British Columbia. The three cases are some of the first in a series of murders and disappearances upon what would later be called the Highway of Tears. See also list of people who disappeared. References External links Jean Sampar in the Vancouver Sunday, May 19, 2017